Cyclone. I started, I'm sure. I did have a uh, LS um, chiropractic adjustment for a long time. So. Did it help? It did. Temporarily or permanent? Temporarily. And then it flares up. Yeah. So, for, I'm not going to do a full evaluation. I just want to show you some basic principles that I think will. You're going to see this a few times now, and it's 100% she told me last night, so it's kind of funny. Um, so, in the clinic, I will do what we're going to do after this with our dog patients. We're going to take a look at how you move and what you do and what not. So, uh, we could do that here as well. I'm not going to skip all that. I'm just going to go right for some very simple principles to show you something most people with back pain are dealing with when they have myofascial dysfunction. So you said right now your right side's worse, mm -hmm. but it could be both sides. Mm -hmm. So if you can come totally on your side. Yeah, so you, know, you need another towel? I'm okay. You oh. sure? Mm -hmm. For a pillow? That's good. Okay. Straighten out your leg here. I'm going to test your abduction strength. So I'm going to ask you to pick up your leg here. Don't go back, you're cheating. Mm -hmm. I, wanted a quad, a quad, I don't want to do a quad, so I want to use a glute medius, which sits right here in humans. Glute medius, minimus, and maximus is back here. So I'm going to test this muscle right here, the medius and minimus. So can you hold your leg up? Mm -hmm. Ready? Go. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You need to hold your leg up. <laughs> Ready? Go. <laughs> can't do that. Can you turn on the other side? Let's try that one as well. So her glute medius is very weak. She should be able to do that. I should not be able, I'm pretty strong, but I should not be able to push her down. So let's try the same thing over here. Ready? Now you know what we're going to do. Ready? Go. She's a little bit stronger. Not a lot, but you look a little bit higher. Ready? Go. See, she's got a little bit more resistance here, but it's not great either. Neither one are great. So we're not going to turn back on the other side. So that's a glute medius. I'll come on your back first. Let me back this side. How are your calves? They get sore occasionally. They get sore, right where? Middle. How about this one? Also in the middle? Yeah. Okay, bite your knee. So I'm going to look at your gastrocnemius here. Watch it, she's going to kick any second. She might do it for your pain. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's very painful. I barely touch her. It's very, very sensitive. You see that? Now let's take a look at the other side. I do the same thing here. Not sensitive, yet. but not that bad. This is a little band here as well, but this one has a very good. Get out of the way. I've learned. Sure. <laughs> She's very unhappy. I barely touch her. So that's definitely, that's hyperalgesia. I pinch her a little bit. Maybe it's even allodynia. I'm not really hurting her. I'm just squeezing her a little bit. That shouldn't hurt. But when I do it really well, I mean, oh, you can stop doing it now because it hurts. That's abnormal. That's a sign of sensitization. Yeah, so this one's not happy. The good medias, minimus are very, very weak. So you're not coming inside. Get some gloves. So, we have a box of uh, large gloves right here. There you go. So, her, if she were a puppy, this would be her iliocostalis on the board right here on the side of the body. She's not a puppy. Her iliocostalis is back here. So, in humans, it's posterior. It's a small string muscle, part of the erector spine and muscle. So, we do, but it's going to pull this up a little bit. So we look at her pelvis here, here's the edge of her pelvis, here's her ribs, in between is that quadratus lumborum, which is in you, it's not a big muscle, but it's a very important muscle. So if I'm going to press on that muscle right there, you need to keep the elbow in front of you, if you don't mind. So we go right here, <coughs> after that she's not going to be very happy. She's very unhappy. I barely touch her. I just give a little bit of pressure here, that much pressure. Does that hurt? No. That's all I do. But when I do it on the QL, right here, yeah. it's very unhappy. Yeah, I can go to iliocostalis, which I can pick up here on the side. Right here, it's probably not too happy either. No. See, that's unhappy too. But let's stick to the QL command right here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use any needles yet. I'm, I'm, I will, with your permission, I'll needle it first. But I'm just going to put a little pressure on here, right here. What I would like you to do, can you hike your hip a little bit? No, not your leg. Just make that much. That's it. Ten times less. That ten times less. Okay, stop. So I'm going to put pressure here on that muscle. And you hike your hip a little bit. There you go. Now I'm right down there. So I'm activating the quadratus lumborum while I put pressure. I'm do that about 13 and a half times. Okay. 
uh, relax in between, relax in between. Let go, and there you go. Okay. So all I'm doing, I'm asking her to contract. You remember that picture yesterday with the finger on the taut band and contraction either side? She's now stretching that tight myofascial band in her quadratus lumborum. Go ahead, 13 and a half times. I didn't count. Are you, where are you? <laughs> okay, keep going. All of these little pressure. That's it. Okay, my thumb starts hurting, so that was 13 and a half. <laughs> okay, now move your hip a little bit. Anyway, just a little flexion, a little extension. Watch if you're back there, you don't get kicked. Just like that. Okay, now you're now lying your back again. And squeeze your calf again, right here. See what that feels like. Okay. Less. She has very much less pain here. Mm -hmm. That's kind of weird, isn't it? It's still sensitive. So, uh, I can squeeze hard. Oh, yeah. Can yeah. <laughs> right. okay, I come back on this side? So you see a decrease in sensitivity in her gastrocnemius, medial head. So if I straighten, I'm going to test you again on mm -hmm. strength. Mm -hmm. If you do like again. Mm -hmm. Hold it. Go. Wow. <coughs> see how much harder I have to press? Mm -hmm. But I'd never treated her glute medius. I didn't touch her glute medius. I worked on her QL. Just with a little pressure of maybe 15 seconds. What that shows you, if she goes to the physical therapist or the chiropractor and says, oh, your glutes are so weak, you need to do strengthening exercises. She can strengthen forever. She's never going to get any stronger because this muscle is inhibited. It does not get the signal. It does not know what to do. When she walks, she probably walks like I do now, falls to her hip because when I need to pick up my right leg, my left glute medius needs to stabilize my pelvis. This must be way too weak to do what mine does, that actually hurts. Yeah, I fall right through it, that is that beach cave. It's great in the bikini, but it's not very functional. Yeah, you know, so, but I never touch the glutes. And yet, she's much, much, much stronger. All I did with low pressure on the QL, and the glutes are stronger. I didn't check her adductors, but the adductors have the same phenomena as the, the, the gastrocnemius. But I want to demonstrate to this something really fundamental that trigger points knock out muscle control of other muscles. So back to your patients, you can test like what Rick did with the boxer. You know, there's the pressure, pick up one leg, put pressure on the spine. And you can really see that dog could not stabilize its left hip. Yeah, left hip couldn't stabilize it. Well, you could say, well, what's that from? Is that from glutes? Is it from the quads? You don't really know, but clearly the dog couldn't stabilize it. It's really hard to differentiate that, as I can do here. But if you just treat a few muscles, usually more proximal, I could have done the same with the multifidae. I can't demonstrate it that easy, but I can look at her multifidated levels and palpate along the spine. We're going to do that this afternoon, palpate along the spine and say, oh my gosh, you're really tight there. And I can needle that. I can't do the pressure, it's too deep, but I can needle it and see a similar response. So if I'm going to needle this muscle, is that okay with you? Yes. Did you see the needle? <laughs> <laughs> you're a horse person, you're tough. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to sit down for that one. <laughs> We've got some special needles here. And then we're in a short round. I'm going to wrap up with the button. Mm -hmm. These are a little bit thicker. On your rehab patients, if you can establish strength very quickly, an increase in strength, it just makes it's a dramatic change in how much rehab you get. Right? And your rehab and your sports and your athletes as well. Yes. So what I see in my world is that typically patients come to us after they fail some of the clinics. That, that because we're, it's expensive, it's out of pocket pay, the insurance company, we don't deal with insurances. So people tend not to come to us as their first line of, you can help me. They're like, they're like 20 dollar co payment. But if you have so many workers comp <laughs> and they're weak, and they put in a work conditioning program, and you okay, need to exercise, 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 but the, she will never get stronger. It's impossible. The muscle, this muscle cannot fire, it's locked out. I've seen way too many patients who have been the report patients malingering. Patients not showing maximum voluntary effort. So, in other words, the patient is wrong, 
for the therapist now being able to figure out why this muscle doesn't fire, which happens quite a lot. And that has major consequences because people lose their disability check. Not because they don't want, these people who work really hard, they say, I had a therapist in a course in Atlanta last year, and I went through this because this is part of our regular courses. We had a heel lift in one shoe, and he said, oh, I've had that kind for 10 years, but I exercise every day, but I never got stronger. But he kept doing it. So we did this, and his colleague needled him, like I'm telling you now, and then they checked again, his pelvis was level. He said, why did you take that shoe lift out? You heel lift, you don't need that. And the guy had tears in his eyes. Said, I "I'm kind of attached to it. I've had it for ten years." <laughs> I was like, "I think I'm attached to it." He lived, but he did. He was really kind of shocked. <laughs> we had the course two weeks later. This was a corporate course. So two weeks later, we went back. He said, "How's your back?" He said, "I haven't had used my heel. I have no pain, and my legs are so strong." After ten years, the physical therapist did not realize, and most people don't, that hey, this muscle cannot fire, and this is why I show you this because it has a long lever arm and it, it's dramatic, it works everywhere in the body. So if you see weakness, now your challenge is how do you test for weakness? You test by seeing, hey, how did that, how does the dog walk? You can do some creative tests what Rick showed in the video, and there's different things you can do. If there's weakness, don't automatically say, oh, there must be the joint, there must be something else. Find out why is it inhibited. This is one pattern that happens in every back patient. Every back patient has a painful medial calf. Every single one. I've never seen one that does not. But a needle this and a calf will probably be normal. I see the same with plantar fasciitis. People with plantar fasciitis rarely have it. They have problems in their calf muscles. So you treat their calf and the plantar fasciitis goes away because they don't have the wrong diagnosis. They just have pain in the bottom of the foot. Not plantar fasciitis. Now in the August edition of physical therapy, Palpating and keep your elbow in front of you. The reason I say that because people, when they get a twitch, they're like, ow, and I'm like, oh, that was really felt great on my nose. <laughs> that has happened a few times, so I'm very sensitive to that now. So, palpating again, can you hug your hip a little bit again? Perfect, beautiful. So, I'm going to dig in here, I'm going to put a little pressure on the least of the needle. I hope it's long enough. Spread that out a little bit, and I'm going to straight in. <laughs> okay? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I bend the needle. No, no that's a, people say that I actually don't believe that it happens so much. I think it's usually bad technique when you bend the needle. But people in horses, horses can bend needles. Oh, yeah. They will because they're so strong. Football players can bend needles. She cannot bend <laughs> All respect to you. Survive. Some big dogs that keep tennis yeah. trying yeah. you know, yeah. 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 to I bet. They can bend it. But most people do not bend it. People say that all the time to cover up a bad technique. But I, I was on the corner. I was like, I probably should put what the big show did. They probably should put something underneath here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Put something underneath here. You're wasting I had it ready for it. You are so great. <laughs> you are a good student. <laughs> See now the difference? It's a little more wet. Yeah. same things in dogs. Because I had to get around the corner of her pelvis, and that's how I bent the needle. So now it should be a little easier.